emphasis on missions. I'm going to have uh, Pazum to come and to help me this morning. We're going to translate for all of you who only speak Burmese. Now, we're just going to do this for a little bit. But this is a common thing that happens overseas. I've had it happen in other countries where uh, you speak a little bit in English, and then they translate it. I heard of one man, he, he had two translators. He'd say it, and then one translator would say it, and then another one would say it. So he, he could take a, have a, go out and have a cup of tea while they were, they were doing it. But uh, we're talking about missions, and uh, so this morning uh, we're just going to take a few minutes and uh, uh, have our, our translator help us this morning. Let me find my verse, Mark 16, 15. <clears throat> Jesus gave us the Great Commission. Mark 16, 15 says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I cannot do that alone. You cannot do that alone. We must do it together. As a, a church. Cooperating with other churches. Acts 1.8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. It starts with you. The Bible word is ye. You witnessing, seeing what God is. You witnessing, seeing what God has done. And telling others. It continues with the Bible word both. Some faithfully going to Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts. Some faithfully serving in Jerusalem. All faithful to love and obey our Savior. As a church, we can fulfill the great commission that Jesus gave us. Giving, going, sending, praying. Doing together what we could never do by ourselves alone. For the glory of God. Amen. Thank you. You know, taking the gospel to people around the world, it's a big task. That's the, that's the job that God has given to us. It's not just to come to us but it's to pass it on to others. That's what missions is all about. It starts with your neighbor. You know, that's your Jerusalem, Stafford, wherever we live. And then the next, na the next places and the next state and the next country. And as a, we're just a small church, but we support several missionaries who go to other, other countries and share the gospel with people. Um, I'd like to ask you to turn this morning to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. We sang the song, Holy, Holy, Holy. And I want to particularly look this morning at the holiness of God. 
And I, I believe that as we see the Lord, as we understand who He is, it will encourage us in our own walk with the Lord, but to share it with others. I'm going to read Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8 to start with. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Let's just pause for a word of prayer. Lord, we, uh, we need your help this morning. Uh, Lord, calm our hearts. Uh, Lord, that you would uh, stop any disturbances or uh, those who would disrupt. And uh, Lord, help us to hear from you. Help us to see you high and lifted up. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, this was a fearful time for Israel. This is a historical uh, event that took place. It said it took place the year that King Uzziah died. I don't know if, I guess we can't imagine it. Um, he had been king for 52 years. England has a queen that's been there a long time, but this was in a time when the king really ruled. I mean, uh, what he said went. So for 52 years, Uzziah had been the king, and they'd prospered. Things had gone, gone well. But now he had died, and this was a fearful time for Israel. They, they didn't know what was going to happen. They, they thought, oh, we could be in trouble now. But you know, Isaiah discovered something. God showed him something. The king was dead, but God is not dead. And you know, whatever's happening in our lives, there's all kinds of terrible things that can happen. Listen, God is not dead. He's the real king. He's the one who's really in charge. You know, our, our world is in trouble today. Just like Israel, they were worried. Oh, what will happen? Well, listen, we don't know what's going to happen in our world, do we? Uh, Isaiah 5, he talks about all the sins that were going on in their nation. Sounds just like reading the newspaper. Uh, Isaiah uh, 5, verse 8 Woe unto them that join house to house. You know what he's talking about there? Uh, greed and covetousness. People just don't have enough. Oh, I've got to have another house. I've got to have another house. Oh, I, oh, I need another house. Covetousness. Isaiah 5, verse 18. Woe to them that draw uh, uh, iniquity with cords of vanity and sin, as it were, with a cart of rope. Uh, he's saying that there's no shame. Sin is just something that's part of their life. Verse 20, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Man, that sounds like today, doesn't it? I missed verse 11, woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink, alcohol, drugs. Man, just like today, isn't it? Uh, people were living in troubled times. And he goes on and on, verse 21, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. Pride. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine. You know, people think it's such a powerful thing. Uh, and on he goes with things that were troubling their day. There are troubles for our day. But listen, God is not dead. God is not dead. The same God that created our world is, is still alive today. And uh, we need to understand that God is not dead. He not only saw that God is alive, but he saw that God is holy. That was the main thing Isaiah saw about God. God is holy. It's interesting that the angels cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The, the Bible says it was so powerful that, that the ground shook when they said it. Now I'm told, you can research this if you want, this is the only characteristic of God where it's said three times. Yeah, the, the angels don't cry out, Love, 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 or justice, 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 but they do cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. That's a key characteristic of our God. Our God is holy. Someone has said, 
Any attempt to understand God apart from His holiness is idolatry. And that's true. You try to understand God without His holiness, that's not the real God. That's idolatry. Our God is holy. He's perfectly pure and clean. Uh, Jesus in, in John 12 uh, pointed out that this passage is referring to Him. I should say John. Uh, God points out in John 12, 41, this passage in Isaiah, Isaiah is talking about, about Jesus. And it's what Jesus taught us to pray. You know, when they said, teach us to pray, our Father which art in heaven, what's the very first thing? Hallowed be thy name. We need to recognize the holiness of God. Uh, in the New Testament, as we, uh, Pazung and I presented this morning, uh, the living holy God tells us to go with his message, with the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here the Lord asks, in verse 8, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Isaiah's answer was, here am I, send me. Now, if you see the context there, you understand, this was not him saying, yes, I'll be the Superman and I'll go. No, this is a man saying, I'm an unclean man. I'm, I'm not worthy to, to go, but Lord, in your strength, I'll go. <laughs> you know, he, this was a fearful, uh, uh, imperfect man. And yet he was willing to be the one that, that God would use. His answer was because he saw God high and lifted up. It's because he saw that God is holy. You know, the, the main way we're going to see the Lord is through the Bible. The, the way we're going to understand him. You know, we know that there's a God because of creation and we see the stars and you know, it causes us to, to know there's a creator. But to know about him, he has to tell us. And that's what the Bible is all about. And particularly in the Bible, you'll see God when you see Jesus. God manifest in the flesh. God holy and, uh, and serving us, serving uh, here on earth. And this, this passage in Isaiah shows us at least uh, three, uh, I'm sorry, three things, four things about, about God's holiness, uh, results of seeing God's holiness. And the first one is there in verse 5. When you see the holiness of God, it will humble you. You, know, you won't look at God and say, how proud you are. You'll look at God and say, well, I'm not like that. Uh, verse 5, woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Uh, you'll see yourself as a sinner. Uh, that's, that's exactly right. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's a pretty good definition of sin. We just fall short of his holiness, of his standard. You know, I talk to a lot of people, and I've talked to a lot of people over the years, and when I ask people if they think they're going to heaven, the standard answer, almost 99 times out of 100, people will say, yeah, I think I'll go to heaven. I've been good. And if I get the chance, I ask them, well, would you be interested to know what God says about that? Now, they don't always want to hear, but... Uh, God says in, uh, in Romans chapter 3 that there's none good. No, and he repeats it. You know, when God repeats something, you need to listen. Let me read it. As it is written, there's none righteous. No, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. You know, people talk about, oh, I was seeking the Lord. Let me tell you something. That was God seeking you. It wasn't, didn't come from you. God was seeking you. There's none that seeketh after God, he says. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. And God is very plain with us, isn't he? He knows. I know how I am. I often tell people, you know, I'm a professional communicator. And yet, there's times when I just can't communicate with people. <laughs> you know, we're, it's so hard to try and get an idea across. That's very simple, isn't it? God says there's not anybody that's good enough to get to heaven. And in case you didn't understand that, he says, no, not one. You're not the exception, and neither am I. As we see the holiness of God, it humbles us. We see, man, I'm not like that. You often hear the question, why do good things happen to, uh, I'm sorry, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, the Bible says there's none that doeth good. The question should be, why do good things happen to us bad people? <laughs> you never hear anybody ask that, do they? Everybody thinks they, they deserve to be treated good. Yeah, I, I often, as I'm driving to church, I'll think, 
Here's most of the world ignoring God. But on the other hand, they expect God to bless them. Listen, God is holy, and He deserves our worship. If you really see the Lord, I mean you really see the Lord, it will humble you. It, in fact, the Bible says it will lead you to repentance. It will cause you to uh, regret your sin and ask God's forgiveness. In fact, in, in Romans 2 verse 4, he says, Despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? God is good to us. God is good to us all the time. And it should cause us to love him and to want to uh, quit the sin that's against him. I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but the reason there's sin is because there's a holy God. All sin is against God. You might punch me in the nose, but the sin is against God. My nose will bleed, but the sin is against God. If there was no God, feel free. There'd be no sin. But there is a God, and there is a, a standard of righteousness. What you and I deserve is what Isaiah saw. Woe is me. That word woe means God's curse. When, when you read that in the Bible, he's saying there's a curse involved. Woe. He says there's woe with drink and, and so on. Woe is me. I'm undone. It means I'm, I'm cut off. I'm cut off from the Lord. Seeing the Lord will, will humble you. But you know, the other thing I noticed there in verse 5, seeing the Lord will open our eyes to missions. Not only will we see that we're sinners, we'll see that we, everybody we live with is sinners. I'm in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And I find in general, it's a lot easier to notice other people's sin than our own. Uh, so we're, we're pretty aware that everybody else should go to hell, but not me, that uh, kind of thing. But we need to understand, missions has all to do with the holiness of God. God is holy. Uh, we sin against God every day. And God sent the Savior. People need to hear that. People need to know that. Uh, I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. All of sin, the Bible says. Seeing God's holiness humbles us. Seeing God's holiness will also help us Keep from sin. In verses 6 and 7, it's an awful illustration, really. He talks about the angel coming and taking a hot coal and putting it on his mouth. Can you imagine? I mean, that's, it just makes me cringe to, to think of it. And what he's talking about there is the holiness of God. Um, sin is very harmful. You know, oftentimes we think, oh, it's just a little sin. Nobody will notice. Well, listen, God notices. Sin is very harmful. And then you, you think of the price that sin costs. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. God became a man and lived and died so that we could be forgiven. That's like that hot coal. Man, it was terrible for Jesus. It's terrible for us. I mean, sin has terrible consequences. You know, the gospel is that Christ died. He really died. He really bled. He was buried. But the Bible says he rose again. He conquered sin and death. Because of that, we can have forgiveness. You, know, you picture a hot coal on your mouth. Most of us think our mouths are pretty good. Oh, you know, the things I've got to say. The world has discovered that concept that everybody thinks what they say is good. That's where talk shows come in. You can call in and you can share your stupid opinion, you know, no matter how stupid it is. And then sometimes they'll cut you off, you know, something. But uh, we all like to... On Facebook, you know, got this, and I don't even know all the names of the things where we can give our opinions. We think our mouths are pretty good. God says our mouths are vile, spewing out things that, that, that shouldn't be. In fact, in, in Romans, Paul, who was a, he was, a, he was a godly man, but he said, I know in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Uh, the goodness of, of life doesn't come from us. It comes from, from God. Sin ruins us. And only God can restore us. Uh, in, in Ephesians, he uses uh, these words when he says, You hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Sin's, sin causes separation from God. Death is separation from life, isn't it? And eternal death is when we're separated from God for eternity. Sin kills us. But God quickens us. Through Jesus, we can have, we can have life. Only God can restore us. As we see God's holiness, it humbles us and it helps us to hate sin. It really will. But thirdly, and that's where we, we come to verse 8, 
it'll cause us to want to serve the Lord. As you see the holiness of God, and he says, who will, who will serve? Because of his holiness, we're willing to say, I will. Because we know it's not our holiness. Uh, did you notice, you know, as Isaiah talked, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And yet, he could serve the Lord. You know, none of us are perfect. In the sense that we never do anything wrong. Um, we're not perfect people. Listen, you're looking for a church with perfect people. Don't join it, you'll ruin it. <laughs> so would I, you know. You're looking for a church with a perfect pastor, keep looking. Uh, you won't find it here. None of us are perfect people, but because of God's holiness, we can serve. The word justified and sanctified, the words, have to do with receiving God's righteousness. And as Christians, it's not our character. It's a, it's a forgiven people that serve the Lord. It's a purified people, purified by the Lord. You know, people who have a true view of God don't look at others with pride. You know, when you have a true view of God, the holiness of God, you don't look at others and say, yeah, they're sinners and I'm not. You look at them and say, man, they're sinners just like me. Someone said, telling people about Jesus is like one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. I mean, we're all beggars before God. Uh, His holiness, it should change our attitude toward others. There's no place for pride. And there's no place for better than, I'm better than you kind of a thing. It's not... Well, I guess I better serve the Lord. God told me I have to. <laughs> I think some people are like that. Oh, you know, the Bible says I've got to do it. Oh, man. Uh, that, that shouldn't be the attitude. It should be, man, what a privilege. This holy God is asking me, a dirty rag, to be his servant. What a blessing. And, and it's not, well, I guess God is lucky to get me. <laughs> I feel like some people are like that. Oh, yeah, you know, if I was... If I was serving the Lord, I'd be a real good servant. But they're not. Uh, Listen, the blessing is on our side. I I don't know. I can't speak for God. I don't think it's a real great blessing that he got me. But it's a blessing that I got him. And it's a blessing that when you receive the Lord, this holy God, uh, you know, it's those who see the Lord and respond, yes, Lord, please use me. And you know, from day to day, you struggle with it. I don't know how you are. I mean, I'm a pastor. I struggle with it from day to day thinking, oh man, can the Lord use me today? To fellowship with God, to serve the Lord. What a privilege. And as you see the holiness of God, you'll you'll realize that. You know, we we don't go, Isaiah didn't go in his own strength. He didn't go for his own reasons. He saw the Lord. And the Lord said, who will go? I'll go. We go for love of the Lord. First, you need to see the Lord high and lifted up. Uh, when you see the Lord, it, it, will, it will humble you. It will help you. Uh, it will cause you to, to care about others. One more thing. As you share the holiness of God with others, it will expose their heart. Let, let me read the next verses, verses 9 and 10, Isaiah 6. So he said, here am I, send me. And he, God, said to him, go and tell this people... Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. He said, Isaiah, I'm going to send you, but they're not going to believe you. You see, when you share the Lord with people, it doesn't reveal the truth about God. It reveals that person's heart. I was reading, uh, some of you might have heard of a man named J. Vernon McGee. I, he said when he was a kid, his, he'd, he'd have to go out in the barn at night sometimes with the lantern and milk the cows. And he said he'd come into the barn with that lantern and you know, it'd light up the barn. And he said two things would happen. The rats would scurry and, it, and the birds would, in the rafters would then start to chirp. Chirp, 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 chirp. He said now that light didn't make those rats rats. And it didn't make those birds birds, it just exposed what they were. And you know, when the light of God comes on a person's heart, it exposes their heart. Some rebel and say, oh, I'm not doing that. And others say, oh God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. You know, the same sun shines on the ice and the clay. 
On the ice it melts, on the clay it hardens. You, you read about Pharaoh in the Old Testament. You know, God just uh, worked on his heart and he hardened his heart against the Lord. When God's holiness is exposed, it will show us our heart. And folks, sometimes that needs to scare us. Because sometimes you'll see your own heart and you'll think, oh, Lord, help me. God's holiness, God's great commission has been given. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now for some will say, no, I'm not doing that. Others will say, Lord, what a blessing that I could share the gospel. Isaiah, he said, he, he asked the question, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And this question is still being asked today. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Um, I was reading another author, and he, he said he was sitting on a plane reading his Bible. And the man next to him said, a young man said, I see you're reading the Bible, and I've been wondering, how can a person have a personal relationship with Jesus? And he said for the next couple of hours, he shared with him from the scriptures, and that guy got saved and came to his church and got baptized, and, and as he said, he's still serving the Lord today. <clears throat> now, if someone asked you that, how can I have a personal relationship with Jesus? Would you be able to explain it to them? Would you? God says, whom shall I send? Who will go? And you know, that the key is, first of all, you need to come to the Lord. In Acts 1.8, when he talks about us being witnesses, a witness is somebody who's experienced something. You know, they saw it happen. It happened to them, maybe. Well, as Christians, if you're saved... You need to be able to tell others, this is what happened to me. This is what I was. I was a sinner. I experienced God's conviction through, through his word and through this witness. And I, I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I prayed and asked him to come into my heart and save me. You, know, you need to be able to, sh to share with him past, present, future, what Jesus has done. Whom shall I send? Who will go? Well, first of all, you need to come to the Lord. You know, the Bible's... Uh, w w the Bible tells us no one is good enough to go to heaven. We'll never be good enough to go to heaven. If, if you were to stand before God and he were to say, why should I let you into my heaven? Well, the answer is not, I've been good. Because we've already read, God says, nobody's been good. The answer is, I come in the merits of Jesus. I trusted your son, Jesus Christ. And he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I did that. And I took you at, at your word. You know, we need to have a personal relationship with God through Jesus. Only Jesus is the way. There's no religion that's good enough. There's no ceremony that will cut it with God. It's only God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way to God. Jesus is the only way to forgiveness. The Bible says in 1 John, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Let me encourage you this morning. You need to see Jesus high and lifted up. You need to see God high and lifted up. It will humble you. If you'll keep looking, it'll keep you humble. <laughs> it will cause you to deal with, with sin. If you're not saved, it'll cause you to come to Christ for forgiveness. And it'll expose your heart. We need that. You know, we sing the song, change my heart, oh God, change my heart. Well, first we've got to see where we are. God help us this morning. Uh, like Isaiah, we live in troubled times, but God is not dead and God is holy. And he still calls to us, whom shall I send? Who will go? Now, this morning, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you're not sure, you know, if you were to die, you're not sure if you'd go to heaven or hell or what would happen. Listen, the Bible says you can know. And it's based on God's word. He says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. You can know. And it's not by good works. It's by trusting Jesus. Let's go to him in prayer as he speaks to our hearts this morning. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, thank you for Isaiah. Thank you for the message that you are holy, that you care about us, and that you have a purpose for us. Lord, help us this morning. I pray if there are those that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would help them to see that. Help them to see how much you love them. Lord, I pray that you would not only speak to our hearts, but that we would respond 
uh, by saving faith. Lord, help us as Christians to take the message to others. Help us to be uh, uh, obedient to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.